facing waterfall. Oh, 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 oh. We want to see how to plot graph using this table of value we got from experiments on simple pendulum. Then afterwards, we want to see ways to find errors in the slope or intercepts in a graph. Yes, that is very important. Now, this is just a typical word, sketch, just a sketch of how graph look like. But look at how standard graph is meant to look like. This is a standard graph sheet and it's measured in 2 cm. That is this big boss you are seeing is 2 cm. If you merge it, it becomes 4 cm. If you merge three of it, it becomes 6 cm. If you use only one, it becomes 2 cm. But if we are to use this graph sheet as it is on this board, you may not be able to see the spaces clearly. So we just have to use a sketch of the graph sheet so that we understand what we are doing very well. Now, to continue, first thing you have to do is write your date of the experiment. Date. Write the date. After writing the date, say a graph of, write the title, a graph of L, attach the unit against T square, attach the unit. They are very important. After writing your date and the title, next thing is label your Cartesian axis. Label your Cartesian axis. How do we do that? To label it, remember they say plot a graph of L against T square starting from origin and obtain the slope. Please, we have posted video on how to choose appropriate scale. I repeat, we have posted video on how to choose appropriate scale. Now, check our channel, just type Chidons Daniel, how to choose appropriate scale during graph plotting. You'll see the video, then you watch it. Now, we will use the knowledge we've gotten from that video to sort this issue of number one, plot a graph of L against this square starting from origin and obtain the slope. Let's see how to do it. Starting from origin, we are plotting L against T square. First thing you ask yourself is, for this L, the lowest is 50. Is it zero? I mean, is, it, is 50 close to zero? No. That means if you put zero here, if you put zero here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, look at where 50 will be falling. And this 50, 50, 60, 70, 80, you now see that 100 will not enter. Yes. And here will be vacant because you not make use of here. Your graph plotting will start from 50 onwards. So you now see it's a poor way of uh, plotting the graph. So what you will do is, since the lowest number is not close to zero, the lowest number here is not close to zero. Now, if I level my Cartesian axis to form around here, this is my y o. That y I will call it L in C M. Please, this L in C M, that is what you level, because what you are plotting is in C M. Don't write y against x. Please don't do that. Just label it appropriately. This is L in C L. Then this is T square. I will say T square is centimeter square. So don't say y against x. You have passed that level. Okay? Now, next thing to do is that instead of me writing 0, 0, if I write 0, 0, it will not be able to take care of these figures we have here because they are not close to zero. The lowest is not close to zero. What I will do is, I will put this symbol, a zigzag, then put this symbol. That means I am obeying the rule of starting from the origin, but I didn't write it. 
because the lowest number is not close to zero. That is what this symbol means. So what I will now do is that I will now put 50. Maybe I want to start from 50 here. Here, I want to start from 2. Yes. Then, this tuner is, will I say 50, 55, 50, uh, 60, 61, or will I say 50, 60, how will I level the scale? To level the scale, for the L, I will say the highest, which is 100, minus 50, all over, how many buses do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all over 6. That should be giving me... 50 over 6. 50 over 6 is 8.3. Now, this 8.3 will approximate it to nearest tens. How do we do that? 8.3 is the same thing as 0, 8.3. Nearest ten means this is units and this is tens. Nearest tens. Is this up to 5? Call it 1. Because it is up to 5, add it to this, it will become 1. Then, we have 2 digits before the decimal point. So, we make here to be 2 digits before the decimal point. So, this is approximately to be what? 10 centimeter. Then, that means we are using it to nearest 10. So that you can easily locate these points we are seeing here. Then, this one, approximately, this is 0 0.3. If you approximate it. But if you are using 0 0.3, 2.3, 2.3, 2.6, there are figures it will not be able to accommodate. We say let us approximate it to 0 0.4. So 0 0.4, that will give you that 2 plus 0 0.4, 2.4, 2.8, 3.2, 3.5. Four point zero and four point four. Whereas here should be sixty, fifty plus ten, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred. So we have taken our scale. We'll also do it here likewise because we want to duplicate it. So we say put this. Then this is two, two point four. 2.8, 3.2, 3.6, 4 .0 and 4.4. And this is 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. This is L in CM and this is T in second square. Now, let's locate their points. Hundred against four point zero eight hundred against four point zero. This is four point zero. So four point zero eight will be aligned here. Ninety against three point six five. Three point six five will be around here. Then eighty against uh, one point uh, three point two. Three point two four around here. 70 against uh, 2.86 around here 60 against uh, okay so we have succeeded to plot this graph then duplicate it put our line of best fit now record you have to write the title here a graph of L is centimeter against T square. That is the second square. Then put your date. So, next thing we have to do is let's see how to get our slope. See how we get it.
Now you say change in L and change in T squared. Please note that the values we are using or we are getting from this is an approximated value because we are using a sketch on the graph. Now this is 100. This is 100, 100 minus, then this is 50, this is 50, because this is the highest value, we call it our L2, minus the lowest value, 50. Then, that is for change in vertical on. Then for horizontal, where the vertical and horizontal meet, that will give you your, uh, your t squared 2. That is the highest t squared. So what is our highest t square? Our highest t square, this is 4.0. So we'll take here to be 4.1, approximately 4.1. We say here is 4.1 minus. Then here, our t square 1, that is approximately 2.1 because here is 2.0. So it's approximately 2.1. So what we we'll now do is, we now say this minus this slope equals 100 minus 50, 50, all over this minus this, 2.0. Recall, highest 100, lowest 50, here about 4.1, and here about 2.1, that is 2.0, so approximately to nearest whole number is 2.1, or to nearest decimal is 2.1 so you now have 4.1 minus 2.1 equal to this but when you use your graph sheet i mean your standard graph sheet to plot it you get the accurate value this minus this value by this will be giving you 25 centimeter over second square it's important to attach the unit of what you got i got my own by saying 25 what is the vertical unit Unit for the vertical is cm. Unit for horizontal second square. So that is your answer. Now, get your g from this. Recall we plotted g equals to the experiment has a formula which goes this way, all over g. From here, we modify it to say that this means t square equal to two pi eta inside four pi square L over G. This is equivalent to this. Then we say that this means if we carry G up and carry T square down, we have G equal to 4 pi square L over T square. And L over T square is what we plotted L over T square, that is what we plotted. So, whatever we get here will be called our slope. That means our G is 4 pi square times slope. G equals to 4 pi square times slope. Times slope. And what is our slope? Slope is 25. So, we will press it inside our calculator. This will be giving you approximately 987 centimeter per second square. Recall, we use initially that we use initially G equal to 970 in the experiment. In the start of the experiment, we got G equal to 900. Recall that in the start of the experiment, recall that in the start of the experiment, we say let's take our G to be 970 centimeter per second square. Yes, but after solving or after doing the experiment, we have 987 centimeter per second square. The reason why we didn't get the exact value is because 
approximations are, or we are done in this experiment. But this answer we got, the question is, the need for in the range of value we noted. We say range of value is 954 to what? 1004, 1006 centimeter per second square. This, are, uh, this is the possible range of value. So now we have 87, still fall in, in the range of value. So we are saying correct. So we have seen how to get the slope and the value of G. Next is to get the error in the word slope. Error in the slope. Let's see how to get it. And we want to see how to get it in two different ways. Now, to get errors in this slope, we want to follow the first method and see how we can use the first method and get the error in this slope. That is the method of best fit and worst fit. Before we see how to make use of best fit and worst fit, it is important to note that the line of best fit is meant to pass through the mean of the vertical points plotted, the mean of the vertical points plotted, and the mean of the horizontal point plotted. See what I mean. For mean of L, L mean is equal to, add up the values of L, 100 plus 90 plus 80 plus 70 plus 60 plus 50 all over all over 6 100 plus 90 plus 80 plus 70 plus 60 plus 50 divided by 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 6 that will be giving us 75 equal to 75 now we have to get the mean of t square. Mean of t square is 4.08 plus 3.65 plus 3.24 plus 2.86 plus 2.43 plus 2.04 all over 6. T squared, the mean of T squared, everything divided by 6 is 3.05. So, the mean of the length is 75, the mean of T squared is 3.05. What you now do is locate 75, this is 75. Uh, 3.05, this is 8. So, look at here the mean. So look at where they meet. That means this point that fell off, what you do is that point, this point has to pass through that mean. That mean you have. You have to draw another line of best fit to pass through that mean. Okay? So, this second line of best fit, we call it worst fit. Then this one, we call it best fit. This is best fit. Then this is worst fit. We we'll call this line of best fit. That is the first one we drew. We we'll call the second one line of worst fit. By taking... If it is only one point that fall off or fall out, you take that one point, look at the one point. You take that one point and make sure it pass through the what mean of the vertical and the horizontal, their mean value. It will pass through it. So this line will pass through it. The way the other one, 
pass through it. That is very important because any line or regression line you draw should pass through the mean of vertical and horizontal. Then what you now do is that you get the slope of that line. Okay, so after putting the line of worst fit, then what you do, we will put our triangle. We'll put it. This is a triangle for line of worst fit, whereas the other one is line of best fit. What we now do x. What is the highest value here? Approximately 100 minus what is the lowest value? That is 60. That will be giving you 100 minus slope equals to 100 minus 60 is 40. Then you come here. What is the highest here? This is change in t squared. The highest is 4. 0 minus minus what is the lowest here this is 2.4 so here should be around 2.5 4 minus 2.5 so 40 over 4 minus 2.5 is 1.5 40 over 1.5 that should be giving us 26 Point seven approximately 26.7 this is the slope for worst what feet slope for line of worst feet wf means what feet now error in slope error in slope is equal to modulus of slope for best feet minus slope for worst feet Modulus means whenever you minus, if you give a negative, forget about negative. We have the normal slope, which is for the line of best fit to be 25. So error will be equal to 25 minus 26.7. Modulus of 8. 25 minus 26.7 will give you 1.7 minus 1.7. But modulus means forget about the minus. So 1.7 centimeter per second square. That is the error in that slope. Error in the slope, error in the slope was going to be 1.7. You now see your slope is equal to 25. 0 0.00 plus or minus 1.7 bracket cm per second square. Now, to get the error of the slope, we have only one point that fall out. So, what we do is we take that one point and draw a parallel line, a line that will be parallel to the line of best fit. When we are done with the drawing, we take a vertical line. Look at a vertical line between that parallel line and line of best fit. We locate the highest point of that vertical line. You can take the vertical line at any point. You can take it here, you can take it any point. So look at here. Uh -huh. This is how to get your vertical scatter. You say error in the slope, error equals to 4 W all over N R. Where W is your vertical scatter, R is the range, that is the highest value minus the lowest value, which is R equals to 4.08 minus 2.04, that is 2.04. And how many points do we have? Six. W is equal to 90 minus 85. That should be 5. Therefore, error is 4 times W5 all over 6 times 2.04.
let's see what it gives us so 4 times 5 is 20 all of us 6 times 2.04 that should be giving you 1.63 1.63 1 1.63 centimeter per second squared so what we have is we package it this way slow equals to 25.00 plus or minus 1.63 centimeter per second squared. We want to now see how you can know if you are correct from the slope you got and from there we know if i'm correct in that experiment here okay? and so look at the formula relating t l and g in simple pendulum that is t equals to 2 pi root l over g understood there are two possible graphs one can be asked to plot a simple pendulum experiment that is graph of t square that is in second squared against l in centimeter either in centimeter or in meter and graph of l in centimeter or in meter against t squared in second word squared are you getting it and so these are the possible graphs one can be asked to plot whichever one that will determine what you are to do to this equation you have now let's go i want to talk about t square against l afterwards i will talk about if i'm asked to plot l against t square and see how the slope will look like after getting the slope we'll be able to deduce our g as well let's see okay now for the first one that is t square against l i will go to this formula what can i do this formula so that it will have t square what i will do is i'll say square both sides t squared is equals to 2 pi root l over g all squared i am squaring both sides because what you do in the left hand side is what you do in the right hand side for it to be balanced okay t squared obviously will be t squared equals to 2 raised to the power of 2 4 pi raised to the power of 2 pi squared pi raised to the power of 2 is pi squared then square root is here square root is opposite of power of two so here will be l over what g so you have gotten t square equals to four pi square l over g now from here carry this l bring it down you will be having that t square is equals to t square over l is equals to 4 pi square all over g. Can you see it now? That means if you are asked to plot the graph of t square against L, what you'll be having is the slope will be equivalent to this. The slope will be equivalent to 4 pi square over g. Okay? And so what you do now is recall that g constant is constant. I mean, G, which is acceleration due to gravity, is constant. And that is its main aim of performing simple pendulum experiment. That is to find acceleration due to what? Gravity. So that G is constant. In Earth, or on Earth, you have it to be equal to 9.8 meter per second square or 980 centimeter per second squared. But because no one is perfect that could error can come in while performing this experiment and so there is always a range one should meet up 
before he can be what uh, accepted okay for this the range is 9.54 to what 10.06 meter per second square then for this is 954 to what 1006 centimeter per second squared okay and so that is about that uh, so what we do since this is the possible range we should note or take note of we have to apply them here we are talking about 4 pi square over g and we will do it in respect to meter per second square we do it in respect to center per second square okay let's go for this one we have it to be 4 pi square all over g is 9.54 whereas for this one 4 pi square all over 10.06 okay and uh, for this one we will say it is a uh, 4 pi square all over 954 then for this one we also say 4 pi square all over 1006 that is in centimeter per second square now if you do the one of 4 pi square if we do the one of 4 pi square all over 9.54 you'll be getting 4 point one three eight then if we do four pi square all over ten point zero six we'll be getting three point nine two four both are in meter per second square so you notice that this number is bigger than this so we say start from the lowest the range is between three point nine two four to what four point one three eight this is when you are talking about G square against what L and the unit is a meter per second square. So this is the possible range you should get. So your answer should fall between this range. Okay. Then for this one, four pi square all over nine five four. Four pi square all over nine five four will be giving you zero point zero four one. Four pi square all over one thousand and six will be giving you 0 0.039 both are in centimeter per second word squared okay and so what you'll be having is since this is bigger than this we say the range for this is 0 0.039 towards 0 0.041 centimeter per second squared and so if i am plotting with centimeter and the time second square i should know that the range should fall in this so if the range didn't if your answer didn't fall in this range you are wrong if the if your answer is not in this range you are you are wrong if your answer is not in this range you are wrong okay then we've been able to see the slope that means if you are getting 3.924 as your slope if you are getting 3.924 that means your g is equivalent to 10.06 meter per second square that is when your length is in meter and your t square is in second square which is always in second square most time then if you are getting 4.138 your g automatically was 9.54 yes so that means if you're able to get your slope, since your t square, your slope is t square equals to 4 pi square over g. That is where you are plotting graph of t square against L. Are you getting it? That means this slope I got, if I'm to deduce my g, I will say cross multiply. This is my slope, t square over g, which is equivalent to this. I will say my g this will come up this i'll take it to be my slope slope equals to four pi square over g therefore my g is equals to four pi square over slope yes that is how to deduce your g if you 
do not want to plot the graph or even uh, perform the experiment. That is how you deduce your G. Just pick a value. In our video on that channel, we pick 970 cm per second square. We pick 970 cm per second square and we use it to teach how you can manipulate your values, plot your graphs, and answer some questions. Uh, so, 4 pi square over slope, 4 pi square over this slope will be giving you what? 10.06. 4 pi square over this slope will be giving you 9.54. 4 pi square over 0 0.041 will be giving you 954 centimeter per second square. 4 pi square all over this, which is your slope, will be giving you 1006 centimeter per second square. So, note this, if you are asked to deduce your G after plotting it, uh, after doing your graph, your experiment, everything, deduce your G. Look at how to deduce it. Four pi square, all over the slope you got. Yes. And so, we have seen that if one, after calculating his slope, it didn't fall in this range, and he's plotted a graph of T square against what? Length. And that length is a meter. Meter, it should fall in this range. And if the length is in centimeter, it should fall in this range. Also, the slope, well, after gotten it, your G is 4 pi square over slope. Please note it. Then we go for the one of you plotting the graph of L against T square. Yes, please try to check the channel, Chidon's Daniel. Once you check it, try to type maybe physics practical. You will see a lot of things on physics practicals. Yes, so that you can watch and watch and learn a lot. Okay, for the one of L against T square, that means from this, from this uh, formula I have here, from this formula I have here, I have to modify it so that L will be at the numerator and T square will be at the denominator. So look at how I will do it. G will come up and T square will come down. We have G equals to 4 pi square L over T square. Yes, what I just did is I carry T square down and carry G up. I am considering this one now. I'm considering the second one. When you are asked to plot the graph of T, L against T square, whether it's in meter or in centimeter. Let's check. Then what happens here is that this 4 pi square will come this side. It will be giving you G over what? 4 pi square is equal to L over T square. You have seen it now. Plotting graph of L against T square. That is giving you G over 4 pi squared. Okay? And so, go, going back to what we have here, we said that if we, your, it's meter per second square, the range will be this to this, okay? That means for this one, for 9.54, I should be having, I should be having 9.54 all over 4 pi square. Then for the 10.06, I should be having 10.06 all over 10.06 all over all over 4 pi squared. That is the range. We are considering the range now. We should say it's between 9.54 again. And this is the G we are talking about. The acceleration due to drive, which is the major aim of performing simple bedroom experiments. Then we also said that for this one, this is a 954 all over. So what is this unit? This unit is meter per second squared. That is this unit. That is about this unit. So this is 4 pi squared. Then you will be also having a all over 4 pi square. That is in centimeter per second square. Okay? Okay? So that is about this. Remember, this one we said is a graph of what? T square against L. Please. 
t square against l is opposite t square is second squared against what second squared against meter that is for this and this one is second squared against uh, second square against centimeter please take note of this and um, um, correction I just made here because we are plotting the graph of t square against L and so your slope should be second square over meter if it is if L is a meter then for this one is also second square over centimeter if the L is in centimeter but for this one of L over what t square this is meter per second square or centimeter per second square then for the one of 9.54, 9.54 in terms of meter per second square, we'll be having 0 0.242, 0 0.242 and uh, 0 0.255. So that is in meter per second square. So for the one of centimeter per second square, this is 24.17. And uh, for this one, this is a 25.48. That is in centimeter per second squared. So you've been able to see the value of your slope, possible value for your slope. If you are plotting the graph of L against T squared, look at the possible values. If you are plotting the graph of L against T square in terms of centimeter and second square in terms of meter per second square look at this in terms of centimeter per word second square look at this so in that video we upload that we were able to get uh, 25 centimeter per second square as our slope and it falls in this range because we plotted the graph of centimeter um, length against period a square of the period so it falls in this one that is how we know we are correct and so since we have our g g over 4 pi square to be equals to what to be equals to slope to be equals to l over t square which is the slope If we are asked to get your G, what you now tell them is that therefore making G subject of formula, G will be equal to 4 pi square times your slope. So G will be equal to 4 pi square times your slope. In this case, it will be centimeter per second square or meter per second square. That is value for your G after solving. So it depends on the unit of your length. It depends on your unit of your length. That is it. Remember the correction we made here. We said T square against length. That is S second square over meter. Uh, for this one, second square over centimeter. So take note of the correction. Then for this one, this G, the unit will be centimeter per second square or meter per second square depending on the unit of what your length that is depending on the unit of your length i think we have been able to talk about this without performing the experiment plotting the graph and giving ourselves headache you can sort it out with the formula so that you know if you are correct or if you are not correct thanks for watching the video see you next time